Alan Liu is in his 2B term studying computer science at the University of Waterloo. Today, I'm excited to talk to Alan about his experiences with his application process for this very competitive program and Alan's insights for future applicants who are interested in this program and the other programs that Alan was accepted to. So without further ado, uh, my first question for Alan is which universities um, and programs did you apply to and which ones were you accepted to? Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks so much for having me, Cassidy. Um, in terms of the programs that I applied to, uh, throughout high school, I was set on going into pre-med, uh, but towards the end, uh, I was interested in business, computer science, and aviation. Uh, so my applications cost a lot of money because I applied all over the place. Um, I applied to, in terms of computer science, I applied to U Ottawa, U of T, McMaster, and Waterloo. Uh, I got into all four of those computer science programs. Uh, I also applied to Western Medical Science with Ivy, and I got that as well. Uh, I also applied to Waterloo's Accounting and Financial Management Program, um, and I got into that. Uh, I also was given a fellowship uh, for that. Um, for those of you who don't know, it's sort of like a, 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 an exclusive opportunity for a, a, around 5 to 10% of the incoming class to network with up, uh, upper years and employers. Um, and I think that was it for my Ontario applications. Um, but I also applied to Harvard, Yale, and Princeton in the States through the Common App. Uh, and I didn't get into any of those schools. Congrats on all your acceptances. Yeah, thanks. Um, so my, my next question is, what was your application process like? And it sounds like it was a really long and busy process. Yeah, no, it, it definitely was um, a pretty long process, uh, I think, just overall. I think for me, I figured out or got a better sense for what I wanted to do by going to the Ontario Universities Fair uh, throughout high school. Um, I know I'm a bit of a keener, but I went, I think, starting in grade nine or grade 10. But it's a good way to check out, um, talk to the recruiters or check out the programs uh, and talk to the uh, recruiters or admission staff. Uh, for each of the schools and for the programs um, and see what is expected of you um, going into the applications. Because I think if you start uh, looking at these requirements when you're beginning your applications, uh, it might be a little bit too late for that because some of the marks that they make decisions off of have already been um, finalized on your transcript. Um, yeah, I think other than that, I think the OU Act process through the 101 applications made it a lot easier because um, it's a centralized place where you can kind of um, put down all your applications and then once you pay for that, um, then all the schools start giving you their uh, login credentials for their supplementary applications or their application status portals. Um, so I think the Ontario process was pretty straightforward, but for the American process with the Common App, uh, it was a lot longer because there were uh, interviews for some of the schools, and as well as a, a lot of essays for the Common App. And what do you think made you stand out in your application, and specifically your application to Waterloo? Mm -hmm. um, I think for Waterloo uh, computer science, I think they mainly just look at your, your averages, your averages, and then back before COVID, they really looked at your programming contest scores. Well, not uh, so that's the computer or Canadian computing contest, the CCC. Um, I think that's actually optional. What they had looked at the most was the Euclid math contest. Um, those are both contests hosted by Waterloo. And they kind of use that to, to benchmark everybody uh, against the scale that they're familiar with, um, just to adjust for any inflation uh, of grades or deflation of grades across high schools or around Ontario. I'm sure some people have heard of uh, Waterloo Engineering's um, adjustment factor. So um, I think the Euclid score for a computer science student is very important. Um, and then aside from that is your grades. I think your AIF can also uh, contribute to that. And that would just be extracurriculars. Oh, sorry, the AIF is the additional information form. And that's basically where you list off uh, all your extracurriculars and any other achievements that you've had. And do you think in your application, your extracurriculars helped you make help make you stand out? Yes, I definitely think extracurriculars also made a big difference for a lot of my programs. Um, I'm not too sure how much of a difference it made for Waterloo Computer Science, um, but just for some background, uh, some of my 
big extracurriculars that I put down um, included uh, in grade 12, I was a student trustee for the York Region District School Board, uh, representing 124,000 students at board meetings, at uh, President's Council meetings, and as well as at the provincial level, at the Ontario College of Teachers, uh, the Ontario Association for Social Workers, and as well as the Ontario Student Trustees Association. Um, I was also student council president, was on student council all four years throughout high school. And I think the last big one was uh, I was also in cadets throughout uh, grade seven to 12. And by grade 12, I was the commander of my cadet unit. Uh, and I graduated as a warrant officer first class uh, with both my glider and my private pilot's licenses, as well as an opportunity to go on exchange to the UK. Um, so I think all those experiences came together to, to make a really strong application. Um, and I think EC has really helped me push, uh, really helped to push me over um, for a lot of these applications. Very cool. Is there anything that you wish you knew when you started your application process? Mm -hmm. um, I think the thing that I wish I knew the most would probably be for the American applications. I think the fact that I went to the OUF and I talked to a lot of, uh, of the admissions staff beforehand, I had a pr pretty good grasp of uh, what was expected for the Ontario schools. Um, applying for the American schools was actually a very last minute decision. Um, I believe the early action deadline was November 1st at 11.59 p.m. I had decided that I wanted to apply for Harvard in the early round, uh, October 31st, the morning of, uh, because our, the night before October 30th, I remember getting um, my ACT scores back and I did pretty well. Um, and that's what, this, uh, that's what made me want to apply. Um, so going into that application, I had about 48 hours to write up all my supplementary essays, get my references. Luckily, um, my guidance counselor, who I worked with for student council, uh, really helped me with that, um, helped me get uh, references from other teachers. And he wrote me a fantastic reference letter um, and really just helped me get, get it in. Um, I think if I had considered the American route earlier, I think I could have been a lot better prepared. And uh, who knows, it might have, could have led somewhere. Um, I think that's, I think the key takeaway is just to do your research early, know exactly what's expected of you. So you have a goal to work towards um, moving back from when applications are due. So um, by the time applications are due, you know exactly what you need to, do, uh, to get done um, each year working backwards. That's, that's a really, really helpful tip. So what was your, um, your GPA or your overall average when you applied to these universities? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, so I did the IB program, which is the International Baccalaureate. Um, so that program actually uh, awards grades on a seven point scale. And then that seven point score gets converted uh, to a percentage for your Ontario uh, secondary school diploma. Um, so I think my GPA um, I was predicted a 42 out of 45, and that converted to about uh, just under or around a 98%. Um, yeah, so I think that's what my GPA was. I don't remember the exact number since it's been a while, um, but that's where I was at. Wow, yeah, that's, that's amazing. And did you, and as you were saying earlier about the Euclid and the, the ACT, what kinds of standardized tests did you take during your application journey? And would you be comfortable sharing your scores on some of those? Yeah, for sure. Um, so the Euclid isn't so much a standardized test. Um, it's more of, it's just a math contest uh, administered by the University of Waterloo. They have a bunch of math contests that you can participate in. Um, it's really good if you can place, uh, especially on the Euclid for admissions, if you can place um, in the top 25% or if you can, uh, get distinction, which I think is top 10% or anything above um, top 25%, I think is a really good thing uh, to have applying to Waterloo CS. Um, but even if you don't do too well in the Euclid, I think if there are two equal applications where one person has taken the Euclid and their score isn't the best, um, they will likely weigh that over somebody who, the other person with identical uh, other metrics uh, who hasn't taken the Euclid just because they have a better idea of how this person is um, from the Euclid. Mm -hmm. um, for the ACT, so for my American schools, uh, I did the ACT. Um, in Canada, that's computer-based testing, so it was on a computer. I also took it with the essay. Um, the ACT, my combined score was a 36 out of 36, 
And then my essay score was also 12 out of 12. Um, it was a, it's pretty crazy to, to get that, to wake up and check your portal and you see that score and you're like, holy cow, I could, I can, I might be able to go somewhere with this. So that was really awesome. Uh, before then, I also did the SAT uh, twos or the SAT subject tests for Math 2, where I got 800 out of 800. And I also did the bio, uh, the biology molecular uh, SAT 2, and I also got 800 out of 800 for that. Wow, that's incredible. So with that said, I'm curious if you have any maybe top tips for for maybe some of our viewers are really interested in Waterloo or they're also interested mm -hmm. in applying to the States. Um, do you have any specific tips that helped you to prep for those tests? Yeah, um, I think for me being in the IB program, um, the content, there was a lot of overlap with the standardized testing um, because I'm not gonna lie for the ACT testing, uh, I did, one practice test the weekend before I got like a 33 on it or a 32. The night before I did the, the practice test that they offer online on the ACT website um, for, for Canadians on, the, on their portal. Um, and I think I got a 34, 35 um, and that was about it. Um, I just went in and using the, with the knowledge that I had from school, um, I just, yeah, just went in and did the ACT came out pretty well. Um, for the essay as well, I didn't actually have a chance to practice writing the essays um, beforehand. So the essay, uh, not the SAT, the ACT essay that I wrote um, for the actual testing was my very first ACT essay. I had uh, asked one of my friends who had taken the ACT essay, um, sort of what structure um, they're expecting. Um, and then with that idea of what structure um, I also got lucky with the prompt. Um, it was about, I think, uh, the ethics of genetic modification of mosquitoes. Um, and that was something that I was actually, I had done some research in, so I had a lot of great arguments um, and that essay turned out pretty well. Um, for my SAT subjects, yeah, again, um, so I took uh, standard level math and standard level biology in IB. And those examinations happened in May of grade 11. So I was just thinking, you know what, since I'm, I'm studying for these exams, I might as well um, knock down two birds with one stone. So I took the SAT subjects right after those exams. Um, so I only studied once for both of those. Wow, yeah, that's, that's really, really impressive. And did you write any um, specific supplementary applications as part of your, your application for any of the programs that you applied to? And if so, and I, I guess that you, you sort of answered that earlier when you were speaking about the US. Um, and I'm curious mm -hmm. if the Canadian programs that you applied for, some of them had this component as well. And how did mm -hmm. you approach it? And um, what what kind of insights do you do you have from that experience? Mm -hmm. Oh, speaking of uh, supplementary essays, I just remembered that I also applied to make Master Health Sciences. That was the other program that I couldn't remember. Um, but that was the program that I had really wanted to go to in Ontario. So if I had gotten health sciences, I would have gone there instead of Waterloo CS. Um, but unfortunately I didn't make it in there. So, uh, I took CS instead. Um, I'm not saying, not to say that CS is a bad program. It's, it's a, a an amazing program with the opportunities that you get from co-op, um, and the, the school name and the industry. Um, it's a great place to be. Um, I think. McMaster was the only one that had supplementary essays that were um, similar to the American schools where you're given a prompt. It's very broad and you kind of um, demonstrate your creativity, your life experiences, and a little bit of your critical thinking. Um, I think McMaster Health Sciences was definitely um, very subjective because uh, when I was doing research on McMaster, it was as soon as you're above a 90% average, they don't look at your average. They strictly look at the scores um, of your three essays. Um, and then the highest scores get into the program like that. And it's, it's the prompts were, were super random. Um, for that, I didn't get in. So I don't know if I have any valid advice to offer um, on that. For the other Ontario schools, the supplementary uh, the supplementary applications weren't so much essays as they were just filling out information um, for the extracurriculars that you did. Um, and then very generic, um, 
tell us about a time where you demonstrated leadership or teamwork or, or things like that. Um, yeah, uh, for the American schools, the common app essays, it definitely was, um, obviously I had to write a, a few of them in 48 hours of, worth of time. So I don't know how, how uh, well the quality of those essays were, um, but I did, I think the very, the biggest thing is to get people to look at your essays. Um, it, even though it was only 48 hours, I had a few people who were really generous enough in donating their time and helping me with my essays. Um, they, they helped me look it over. And in the end, um, it was a pretty well-polished piece um, for, for, for the time that I had. So I think for the supplementary essays, the, one that re the ones that require um, creative writing or any sort of uh, long answers, definitely ask other people in upper years uh, to look over those essays, especially people who have made it into those programs or schools, um, because they likely know what um, what these admissions officers are looking for. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a really great piece of advice. And my last question is, based on your experiences, is there anything else that you would like to share with the the viewers that are listening to, or watching this video? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think um, from my experience with all my ECs in high school, um, it was extremely exhausting. Um, each one of the things that I mentioned um, earlier, those were all things that took up a ton of time, but um, I definitely sacrificed a lot of sleep for those because those are all things that I was very passionate about. I think for people still in high school or um, who still have a bit of time before applications come around, I think you definitely wanna make the most out of your high school um, experience. Um, do a lot of extracurriculars and um, that's the best way for you to find out what you're passionate about. Um, and the longer you do things, the, the more commitment it shows. And um, the only way, I guess, uh, how do I say it? Um, what really stands out in an, app, in an application is your demonstrated interest and uh, perseverance in an activity. Um, definitely, I think if you had one or two extracurriculars that were uh, over a long period of time where you have made significant accomplishments, um, it definitely looks a lot better than a bunch of really small one-off uh, extracurriculars, um, such as volunteering for a one-off event, um, going to uh, just one hackathon instead of going to a bunch of hackathons. Um, yeah, I think it's definitely the quality over quantity when it comes to ECs. Awesome. Thank you so much, Alan, for, for taking the time to chat with me. And I hope that you have a great rest of the day. Yeah, no worries. Thanks for having me.